My name is Sabrina Lowe Dumond. I live in Southern California. And um, I have a son named Zach who is now 28. Um, but when Zach was uh, maybe eight years old, um, he started to show signs of a muscle weakness. And then ultimately we found out it was Pompe disease and we received um, enzyme replacement therapy. A few years ago, I was recruited by Every Life Foundation to help with passing a law to make Pompe disease part of newborn screening. I just got to um, testify before um, the Senate and the House and the governor's committee and, you know, probably made a dozen trips up to Sacramento that year. But because we had such a passionate team of people who wanted to see this law pass, we were successful. And I'm thrilled to have been a part of it. Sabrina, I understand you're on this community advisory board that gives feedback on new therapies. Could you tell us a little bit about that? A lot of boards, advisory boards, are, um, they're put together, they're industry driven. And I'm on a board that was patient driven. And it's called the Customer Advocacy Board. There are a total of 20 members. Um, they are represented by 10 different countries. And it originally started with the IPA. When um, companies such as yours, when they have a clinical trial or they're doing research or they have a project, they can bring it to our board and we bring our actual realistic needs and desires and wish list. We meet together when there's a need and it's very candid and it's very um, interactive. There are so many people, moms, dads, brothers, sisters, that, you know, are, they, they want to be advocates. They want to, you know, they want to make a difference in not only their loved one's life who is diagnosed with Pompeii, are just a difference in the world. What, did, what advice would you have for them? I feel like um, there was a time in Zach's young adulthood, so we'll call it 18 to 21, where I should have had him own his disease differently than I did. So now at 28, um, or actually around 26 to 28, he's, you know, ordering his own supplies uh, for his BiPAP machine and he's ordering his own medication and he's figuring out his own insurance and deductibles and all of that. And it feels very late in life to be doing that. And had I brought him into the fold sooner and educated him and made him own his disease, I think he would be better off. Um, you know, adulting is hard. And on top of everything else, he's having to deal with his um, disease and all of the medical things that I used to handle. Without question, I would just handle it because it was my job. But at some point it became his job and I never transitioned it. So I think that was my learning. That's what I would want other parents to know is they're ready for it. You know, they can handle it. So we just need to transition and have them own their disease sooner than late 20s. So how does it make you feel now that like 98% of babies from where, from when you started at basically zero to now today, 98% are screened. That That's just incredible. It's incredible. I felt like I'd won the lottery. I thought what a privilege to get to participate in something so great that could change so many lives. With a muscle weakness disease, even with enzyme replacement treatment, you can't reverse the damage. Once it's done, it's done. So had we had newborn screening when Zach was a baby, then we would just be incredibly mindful of what to look out for. And at the first sign of a weakness, we could have seen a neuromuscular specialist and started treatment and started physical therapy and started everything that we needed to do. So I'm thrilled. I know it doesn't do a lot for my son, but what it does for the next generation and the generation after that is, is exciting.